a kilometer-high tower in Saudi Arabia, a cube-shaped skyscraper made of nine stacked glass boxes in Miami, a twisting pair of towers in Toronto that look like they've been sculpted by the wind. By 2028, these extraordinary buildings will transform skylines across the world. But as construction races forward, questions are emerging about whether some of these mega-projects can overcome the unprecedented engineering challenges they face. The race to build these impossible structures reveals which global powers will dominate the next economic era and which might be reaching beyond what's technically possible. We're entering an unprecedented building boom. In 2024, there were 25 buildings over 1,000 feet completed globally. By 2028, that number is projected to reach 40. This isn't just about height records. These structures represent a fundamental shift in how cities function and compete for global relevance. Take Saudi Arabia's Jeddah Tower. After years of delays and speculation, it's now confirmed for completion in 2028. At 1,000 plus meters, over 3,280 feet, it will finally break the one kilometer barrier that architects have pursued for decades. The story behind this tower goes far beyond its height. When construction first began in 2013, the kingdom was a dramatically different place. Oil prices were above $100 per barrel, and the Crown Prince's Vision 2030 plan didn't exist. Construction stalled in 2018 during Saudi Arabia's anti-corruption purge, when several project investors were detained, including the chairman of Saudi Bin Laden Group, the main contractor. What few people realize is that the towers resumed construction in January 2025 directly connects to the kingdom's desperate need to diversify its economy. Internal Saudi documents reveal that without dramatic changes, the country could face economic crisis by the mid-2030 as global oil demand peaks. The Jeddah Tower and surrounding development are expected to create 50,000 jobs and generate billions in tourism and investment. The Jeddah Tower isn't just an architectural achievement, it's the centerpiece of an entirely new economic district designed to generate non-oil revenue. Every aspect of its design serves this purpose. The observation deck will feature the world's highest outdoor terrace and is projected to draw millions of visitors annually. The mixed-use floors incorporate hotel rooms operated by Four Seasons, residential apartments, and office space for companies being courted to relocate their regional headquarters from Dubai and Qatar. But here's what makes this story even more compelling. Competing projects are racing to transform skylines in other global cities. In Miami, the Waldorf Astoria Hotel and Residences is under construction and scheduled for completion in 2028. At 1,049 feet tall, 320 meters, it will be Miami's first super tall skyscraper, the designation for buildings exceeding 300 meters. The tower's design by Siegel Suarez Architects is unlike anything seen before. Nine offset glass cubes stacked on top of each other, creating a striking silhouette on the Miami skyline. Each cube is approximately 10 stories tall and juts out at different angles, giving the building its distinctive shape. The economics behind this project reveal America's approach to urban development. While construction costs exceeded typical skyscrapers by about 35%, the premium pricing for units has more than offset this difference. Penthouses in the Waldorf Astoria, Miami are selling for over $30 million, some of the highest prices in the city's history. The developer has already recouped much of the construction cost through pre-sales, years before completion. What's particularly noteworthy is the tower's hurricane resilience system. The exterior is engineered to withstand Category 5 hurricane winds exceeding 185 miles per hour. The building's base is designed to manage up to 15 feet of storm surge with pressurized lower levels and floodable perimeter zones that protect critical infrastructure. This focus on climate resilience represents America's gradual shift toward adaptation rather than pure prevention. As climate impacts become more severe and federal climate policies remain inconsistent, private developers and local governments are taking the lead in creating structures designed to function in a more extreme climate future. In Toronto, the Sky Tower at Pinnacle One Yong is rising to claim the title of Canada's tallest building at 1,027 feet, 313 meters. Scheduled for completion in 2026, this residential skyscraper represents Toronto's emergence as a global architectural center. What makes Sky Tower remarkable isn't just its height, but its design philosophy. Unlike traditional rectangular towers, Sky Tower features a gracefully curved exterior that becomes progressively slimmer as it rises. This design minimizes wind resistance while maximizing views for residents. Another Toronto landmark under construction is the One, a 1,075-foot mixed-use tower designed by Foster Plus Partners, scheduled for completion in 2025. Its exoskeleton design, with an external structural frame visible from the outside, creates column-free interior spaces, allowing for more flexible floor plans. 
Together, these Toronto Towers represent Canada's approach to urban development, pragmatic yet progressive, with a focus on livability and design excellence. The economics here are particularly revealing. While construction costs are 15 to 20% higher than conventional buildings, the developers justify this premium through energy efficiency and increased usable space. What many people don't realize is that these extraordinary structures are only possible because of a revolution in building materials that has quietly transformed construction over the past decade. Traditional skyscrapers relied on steel and concrete, materials with fundamental limitations in terms of weight, strength, and flexibility. The new generation of super tall structures incorporates materials that were theoretically possible for decades, but only recently became commercially viable. Carbon fiber reinforced polymers, CFRPs, are now being used for critical structural components in the Jeddah Tower. These materials offer strength to weight ratios five times better than structural steel, while providing greater flexibility during high winds or seismic events. When the Jeddah Tower sways in strong desert winds, its carbon fiber components flex rather than resist, dissipating forces that would stress conventional materials to their breaking point. Ultra-high performance concrete, UHPC, used in the Waldorf Astoria, Miami, achieves compression strengths nearly three times that of traditional concrete while requiring less material. This reduces the building's weight while improving its structural integrity during extreme weather events. Perhaps most revolutionary is the development of self-healing concrete, which contains calcium carbonate precipitating bacteria that automatically seals small cracks by secreting limestone-like material when exposed to water. The result is a building that can repair minor damage on its own, extending structural lifespan by decades. Manufacturing capacity for these advanced materials is concentrated in just a few countries, primarily Japan, Germany, the United States, and increasingly, China. As demand surges with the new skyscraper boom, countries that control production are gaining significant economic leverage. When we map the location of these super tall structures against economic and political developments, clear strategies emerge. Saudi Arabia's push to build the world's tallest structure directly connects to its Vision 2030 plan for economic diversification. Internal government projections show that without new non-oil revenue sources, the kingdom could face economic crisis by the mid-2030s as global oil demand peaks. America's focus on climate resilient structures in Miami reflects a pragmatic approach to the inevitability of more extreme weather. Rather than attempting to prevent climate change entirely, these buildings acknowledge its reality and focus on adapting to new conditions. Canada's emphasis on livable, design-forward towers in Toronto represents its position as a stable, progressive alternative to other global cities. As political uncertainty affects real estate markets in places like London and Hong Kong, Toronto has positioned itself as a safe haven for global capital. These patterns tell us something important about how different regions are competing for power and influence. The Gulf states are using iconic architecture as a way to accelerate economic diversification before their oil wealth diminishes. North American cities are focusing on creating resilient, livable structures that can adapt to climate instability and attract global talent. Financing these mega structures requires entirely new approaches to capital markets. The Jeddah Tower's resumed construction was made possible through a complex financial structure that includes the Saudi Public Investment Fund, international sovereign wealth funds, and Islamic financing instruments that comply with Sharia law. The project uses a sukuk, Islamic bond, structure that provides investors with partial ownership rights rather than interest payments, raising billions through this mechanism alone. Miami's Waldorf Astoria utilizes a blend of traditional debt financing, pre-sales, and private equity investment. The developers created specialized investment vehicles that allow institutional investors to participate in both the hotel and residential portions of the project, spreading risk across different asset classes. Toronto's Sky Tower represents a more conservative approach with traditional bank financing supplemented by the developer's own capital and pre-construction sales. This reflects Canada's more regulated financial environment and lower risk tolerance. These varied approaches to financing reveal important differences in how various economic systems are responding to the challenges of our time. State-directed economies like Saudi Arabia can mobilize enormous resources for strategic projects. Market economies like the United States are developing new financial instruments that allow private capital to address emerging needs like climate resilience. What will it actually be like to live and work in these extraordinary structures? In Saudi Arabia's Jeddah Tower, residents of the luxury apartments will experience something akin to living on a private island in the sky. With dedicated elevator banks, separate amenity floors, and helicopter access, these residents could theoretically live for weeks without ever touching the ground. This vertical stratification 
reflects Saudi society itself, highly segmented by wealth and status. In Miami's Waldorf Astoria, the emphasis is on branded luxury and service. Residents will have access to hotel amenities and staff, creating a lifestyle that blurs the line between home and resort. This approach reflects America's emphasis on consumer experience and service-oriented luxury. Toronto's Sky Tower takes a different approach, with a greater focus on community amenities and shared spaces. The tower includes common areas designed to foster interaction among residents, reflecting Canadian values of community and inclusivity. These differences in how people will actually use these structures reflect broader cultural and political values. Some prioritize exclusivity and status, others emphasize service and experience, and still others focus on community and shared spaces. As 2028 approaches, these extraordinary structures are racing toward completion. Each represents a different vision of our future, from Saudi Arabia's bid for post-oil relevance, to America's embrace of climate adaptation, to Canada's focus on livable urban density. But which of these models will prove most successful in navigating the challenges of the coming decades? Will it be the ambition of the Gulf states, the pragmatism of North America, or approaches emerging in other regions? The answer might come sooner than we expect, because while these buildings are scheduled for completion by 2028, unexpected challenges could change everything. Engineering a kilometre-high structure like the Jeddah Tower presents unprecedented technical hurdles that have never been solved at this scale. Economic instability could impact financing for several projects, and increasingly, severe weather threatens construction timelines in coastal cities like Miami. The race to complete these structures isn't just about breaking height records or showcasing architectural prowess. It's about proving which economic and political systems can deliver on their promises in an increasingly unstable world. By this time next year, we may have our answer. Let us know what you think in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and watch our next one shown on screen.